We know plenty of people who are so poor that all they have is money. We have to take time as individuals doing business with one another to look at the hustle and how our spirit is navigating in that hustle and what we're learning about ourselves and about those we're engaged with through that hustle. It's really a shame that our society is not really built for this type of understanding. When you face the people that you are doing business with, you have this sense of knowing that you are in it together. I just felt so depleted and so used by the end of the day that I really didn't even know why I was doing what I was doing. That's a huge, huge step. If you're willing to do that, that could take you to a whole other level of enjoyment and fulfillment in life that you didn't even know was possible. All right, so how many times in this quest that we've been on have we been told that there's no chance that you can hustle and be a spiritual being? Like Too often we are told spiritual people are just all about the, oh, you have to be peaceful and passive. And I think it's time that we take a little bit of our discussion and debunk that myth and show that you can have spirituality and hustle and you can align your goals with your soul, right? In this world of duality, we often see a lot of spiritual individuals who are so focused on the spirituality that they aren't too focused on the business side, right? And then on it's kind of flipped. Oftentimes you see so people, people so focused on the business side that they're not bringing their spirituality into their business. And so what we're talking about here, like bringing the spirituality of hustle, that there, it doesn't have to be one or the other. The reality of true spirituality is coexistence, right? Yeah. And so this means that we aren't limited to one side or the other. You don't have to be so aggressive and in business, it's like, oh, business, 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 aggressive, like, ah, and then it doesn't have to be like, oh, spiritual, and then there's nothing. Not to put any judgment on anything, it's just that there is a happy medium there and that we can be very aligned with where we're at, with our souls and with our spirituality and breathe that into the business and still be still have a business that is quote unquote successful in what we desire it to be and impactful and sustainable or any of these things that we feel is in alignment with, with our soul and our spirituality. And we can be assertive. We can be connected. We can understand that business is all about relationship and it's not one-sided. You know, these are practices that I think it's important to debunk on either side and recognize that that there are there have been and there are currently plenty of individuals who are spiritually aligned with their goals and breathing that into their business to create an impact yeah and ultimately i think it's all a myth anyway (laughs) because even if you're an individual who has a very spiritual business Mm -hmm. right and you are in one who is passive in your approach. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that you're not out there hustling. I've watched these individuals True. and they are still hustling. Mm-hmm. It's just they've chosen a different approach to how they hustle. Mm-hmm. And if you are in a corporate environment and you aren't bringing your soul, your soul isn't aligned with what you do. In one way or another, whether you desire to admit it or not, your soul is still playing a part in it. And it's just what level of awareness do you have of the impact that your career is having on your soul? And I talk all the time about how there was once a time in my life where I was so focused on what I thought I should do and my soul was not aligned with that that it was like my soul was being pulled out through my belly button. Mm -hmm. And it was a visceral feeling for me 
all the time. So there is spirituality in the hustle, regardless of what path you're going down. But what we desire to talk about is how you align your soul with that hustle, right? And that you understand that if you are one who is where I was once upon a time in my life, and you're like, ah, they're just being soft. Hmm. My colleagues think that those are the weak ones, Mm -hmm. that they're the lion. And these kind people are the gazelles and they should just pounce on them. It's really not true because now I'm one that someone might think is a gazelle, but I'm not because there's a difference between being aggressive and assertive. And you should not mistake our kindness for weakness because we are business savvy. We're not completely unintelligent when it comes to business. And we are willing to step up when we need to in business and be assertive when necessary. But the question is, what does our soul need? And what is its expression through this business? And when is it necessary to be assertive? And when is it not? Because like it or not, there's energy behind every action we take, even in business. And anyone who's saying it's not personal is lying to themselves because it's always personal. Hmm. It's always personal. You are dealing with individuals' lives, their families, their financial movement forward. And so if it's not personal to you, then you need to step back and ask yourself why. Hmm. Right? Yes. And so we have to take time as individuals doing business with one another to look at the hustle and how our spirit is navigating in that hustle and what we're learning about ourselves and about those we're engaged with through that hustle. Mm. I love that. And it's, it's really a shame that our society is not really built for this type of understanding. You know, we are we're not kind of taught from a young age how to align our soul with our goals. Mm -hmm. We are honestly taught very differently. What is, you're kind of taught, hey, this is how you're successful or, and what does that even mean? I mean, for, for many years now, it seems like it's been how much money you make that makes you successful. But, you know, we know plenty of people who are so poor that all they have is money. Yeah. And that's a huge aspect. How many people have a ton of money and have been deemed successful, but have lost at what cost, right? Mm -hmm. They've lost their relationships. They've lost their family and friends. They've lost all that is important to them or that they truly value. And so then they have to buy the things in order to make them happy and then create a void that is unfulfillable. And not to say that you, not that it's, not to say that you can't make a lot of money and be happy. You absolutely can't. There is no, this is not what this is about. Yes, 100%. But this is, this is about understanding is what I'm doing and what I'm dedicating my life to aligned with who I am as a person. And if the answer is, I don't know, that's actually a great start. Because mm-hmm. most people don't take the time to even ask that question or reflect in that question. That's a huge, huge step. If you're willing to do that, that could take you to a whole other level of enjoyment and fulfillment in life that you didn't even know was possible. And that's not to say that whatever it is you choose to do for your career, when you do find that alignment with your soul, that there won't be challenges. Or there won't be tasks that you don't enjoy Mm -hmm. because like it or not, there's always those things that are not your favorite thing to do. But when you come at it from that awareness of what am I learning about Mm -hmm. myself through this process? What am I learning about the world around me through this process? And how can I continue to grow with this learning? Mm -hmm. Then it does become hustle for the soul, Mm -hmm. right? You expand in so many different ways that you wouldn't have known is possible. Mm -hmm. 
versus what I went through previously, where I just felt so depleted and so used by the end of the day that I really didn't even know why I was doing what I was doing. There's such a different feeling that goes on. And then when you face the people that you are doing business with, you have this sense of knowing that you are in it together. That really and truly, the stronger you become, the stronger they become. And the stronger they become, the stronger you become. Mm -hmm. And I know we've thrown a few people off in our approach to doing business because we don't believe in competition. Mm -hmm. And it is different, but in competition, it's like I have to be better than you. But when we look at a market and we understand that there is growth enough for everyone and what we have are collaborators, and that those collaborators, if they're doing well, then there's something I can learn from them. Mm-hmm. And I can take what I've learned from them and I can go in a different way. So the hustle is how then can I take what they've done well, learn from them, and then figure out how I can apply it to what my soul is calling me to do. Mm-hmm. Because my soul wouldn't be calling me to do exactly what they're doing. Mm-hmm. It's going to call me to do something that. I'm meant to do here. And so I need to understand based on what I've learned from them, what I'm meant to do in that same arena, but different enough because there's what 8 billion people here now. They can't possibly be in service of all 8 billion people. So can I collaborate with them or can I just garner enough knowledge that the collaboration is that now I can figure out what my soul is meant to do making certain that I honor what they've done, but now find my own path. Absolutely. Collaboration also pushes the best out of all the parties, which then ultimately creates the most value for the customers, which is important because they create value and quality. Mm-hmm. If, they, if everyone is kind of pushing each other and collaborating to be better in that sense, then it's not a competition to squash everyone down and, and one rises above the everyone else. How is that really benefiting the whole? Right. I would offer it's not. But when there is understanding from this place that there, as you're saying, there is more than enough business for 8 billion plus people, okay, well then great. Well, then we can, as you're saying, beautifully learn, grow, and, and pull the best out of each other. And that's how, I know that's how I would like to do business, and that's how I would love to see Like when I buy a product, that's what I love to look in from businesses that I buy products from, right? Like what are they doing to, to not only what, what impact are they creating on the world around them? You know, what are they doing to, what are they learning from, from their, their like companies in their industry and how are they, how are they continuing to evolve and grow? Not expecting them to be perfect, but anticipating them to be aware of the customer the customer's needs, and then what is possible in the future. Those are incredible aspects that I know I desire to invest in when I look at other companies. Exactly. And I'm going to go back to what we talked about in a previous podcast with that symbiosis, Mm -hmm. right? And what we saw in um, our tour in South America and the trees. Mm -hmm. Because we were talking to one of the individuals who was guiding us through Patagonia, and he had previously been a scientist and was studying a bunch of science. And he said, yeah, there was a scientist who had been studying social sciences and had learned that the true evolution, if we desire to have true evolution, is going to be on symbiosis and not competition, because competition is like parasitic Mm -hmm. and will inevitably always tear down whomever it is that is feeding off of the other. And so there can never be a true strong movement forward. However, if we look at ourselves as the symbiotic relationship where 
we are constantly feeding one another and lifting each other up, then we can truly evolve and we can move forward. And so if you look at it in the plant species, where if a parasite comes in and takes over a plant, eventually the plant will die and so will the parasite because it no longer has anything to feed off of. Same is true if you look at symbiosis. When both of when a symbiotic relationship forms between a plant and another plant and they come in and they feed off of and support one another, then they grow taller and stronger and they over time can really live a lot longer together. That's the difference between competition and collaboration. And so if we truly desire to have the spirituality of the hustle and unite together and have evolution in a marketplace, all we have to do is look at the world around us. Mm -hmm. We truly just need to look at the world around us and say, which one's going to get us to where we want to be? Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. I'm Austin, co-host here at the Heart Leader Podcast with Amber. And if you haven't already, please take a quick moment to like and subscribe below. It helps us know we're making amazing content that you enjoy. And thank you for your support. We'll see you in the community. Back to the show. The ironic thing is you always hear, well, it's nature versus nurture. And what you just pointed out is that symbiosis is nature. That is evolution. And so it's very ironic because the very thing that they're going against when saying that is actually not true. Yes. And I'm sorry, I keep like bumping this microphone. I got to get used to this whole setup. So <laughs> if you hear, that's me. <laughs> For anyone who's listening to this, I'm clumsy. Um, one thing that I think it's important that maybe we can kind of start to discuss is there's a lot of societies still, uh, culture still, that are very focused on it's not about what you're passionate about. It's not about, you know, your goals. It's what it's what makes you the most money, or it's what, um, you know, what you can do to support your family and all these things. Which I understand the purpose behind it. It's not that like it is important to support your family and to support yourself, and so that you can actually uh, have a life and 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 enjoy things and take care of your family. I mean, these are these are beautiful, important things. But I, th I think the miss is that it's when you can still be in line with your goals and, and your spirituality and what you do in life and still support yourself and your family. It's not, it's not a limitation to one or the other. And so I think it's what, what can someone do maybe, or what questions can people start to ask themselves if they realize like, Hey, you know, I've, I've grown up in a, in a system or a situation that did not value aligning my soul with my goals. You know, what and I'm I'm already deep into or I'm I'm you know maybe I'm starting college or maybe I'm 10 years into into working and I'm doing something I don't love. And and I like what what can, what are some of the practical things that people can start to do to recognize um you know instead of just kind of quitting and then being like okay now I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, because that's not going to get us anywhere either. So how, how, what are some practical steps that people might be able to do to, to help themselves? It's a tough question because yeah. I've spent a, a good amount of time in cultures where it is very prevalent and important, right? And you can't, you can't just stop and say, look, my family has been doctors or lawyers or been in this store for generations. And now because I desire to go do something else, I am simply going to step away and my whole family has to pay the price from me making a different choice. And so then there is this whole different structure. And we can't sit here in these chairs and say that we have an answer for that because we don't. And there's also some families, like we just talked to an individual. He's the first one to get out and get a strong job 
for his entire family. He's paying the bills for everyone. Mm -hmm. It isn't his passion. It isn't what he desires to do. He has a whole family, like extended family, depending on him to pay the bills. And so there are situations where aligning your soul with your goals, well, what are your goals? Are your goals to help pull your family up and show that love and that unconditional love for family, even if it isn't igniting the passion that you have? This individual had other passions, but his biggest passion was to take care of his family. Mm. And so that was his goal. The other individuals, maybe their passion isn't to take over the store or to be a lawyer, but it is to honor the tradition of their family. Mm -hmm. And so that is the goal of their soul. But then what they can do is find other ways to honor what lights their soul up. Mm -hmm. So a hobby could be what lights their soul up. Or on their time off, they can find those other things. But truly, you have to ask yourself, what is my ultimate goal for my soul? Mm -hmm. Is it to be an expression of unconditional love toward my family so that I can show that, no, this isn't what I enjoy doing with my free human time, but I'm going to do it because this is who I honor, treasure, and cherish, right? And we're not going to know that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And that's, that's such a beautiful perspective because I feel like when we hear the word hustle, especially when it comes to social media, it's about making money. Mm -hmm. And it's like you, you can have multiple hustles and there you have multiple streams of income. But what really is a hustle? You know, is it just another form of the way of actions that we're taking? Like you say, like not everything we do has to make us money. Mm -hmm. That can be an aligned goal. You know, if you want to take, for, if you want to be a photographer and it's something that supports your soul and fulfills you in the off time that you have when you're doing something that maybe is like you're saying, maybe not the best thing in the world that you want to do, but in reality, it's, it's helping your family in that way. And that is important to you. And then you're finding fulfillment through what you're doing and the hobby that you're doing. And it's, it's creating a, a bigger picture that allows for happiness and fulfillment and love and connection and spirituality to flow versus scarcity, lack, fear, uh, and judgment, for example, which spirituality doesn't really flow. Aligning of goals doesn't really flow. Happiness definitely does not flow. And so oftentimes we might be in the very situation that we were meant to be so that we can learn. Maybe that is the spiritual teaching that we're seeking to understand as a human while we're here. And we have to understand that not all situations are permanent. Yes. And so we have that opportunity to pull ourselves out or, or dive deeper into what we are already in from a different perspective. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we didn't feel like we wanted to take over that store or become a lawyer or just do something to make money so that our family, you know, maybe we wanted to do something else, but the reality is that we actually wanted to do that all along. But until we take the time to ask ourselves and not feel like we're being forced, that we are actually shifting that direction from the external to the internal to the internal to the external, and we are taking direction over our actions, then we are saying, I choose to align my soul with this goal. Yeah. I feel like it's really important for anyone to know that nobody can tell them how to feel about something, hmm. right? And too often in the flow, of all of this, we do allow others to, we give permission for others to tell us how to feel about something. And so part of what you're describing is to take that time to say, how do I truly feel about this? So I can align my soul's goals with my actual goals. And no, like, heck, you might say, I don't really want to do this. Like, it isn't my true goal or my true calling. And that's okay. But then you can find a way to say, but my true goal 
is to show my family how much I love them. Mm -hmm. That is my goal. And so I can reconcile the one that isn't my actual goal. Like this isn't what I want to do, but this is what I want to do. And so these two match, like in order to show my family how much I love them, then I'm willing to accept the goal that I don't desire as an expression of that. Because if I'm going to show them that I love them, I can't show them in the way that I receive love. I have to show them in the way that they receive love. Otherwise, I'm just shoving my way of loving at them versus honoring the way that they receive love. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to actually hear them and honor them with the unconditional love. So then I am meeting my goal. And that's the most beneficial thing we can do. Not have someone tell us how we should feel about it, but understand how we do feel about it because then we can reconcile things, mm -hmm. right? And that's a hustle. Talk mm -hmm. about a hustle. <laughs> that's a hustle because that's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a lot of internal work, a lot of internal awareness, and it takes a lot. That's the spirituality of hustle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in addition, mm -hmm. you could be in a job that makes you happy, but maybe isn't, you never thought about it as being a, a spiritual advancement for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it could be a way to take what you're already doing, which you love, and say, okay, well, how can I, how can I, breathe love more into what I'm doing. Like with the relationships that I'm creating, how do I, how do I really show that this is a symbiotic relationship? How do I really show um, my coworkers or my employees and show how valuable they are to this business? How do I, how do I just, how can I actually be more loving with the actions that I take and the connections and show that we all lift up together? You know, so it's, it doesn't have to be like, okay, I'm doing one thing and then now I have to do another in order to make me happy or to be aligned with my, my goal and my souls and all that. You could already be exactly where you're meant to be. And oftentimes we, I would offer, we, we always are exactly where we're meant to be because we create our reality. And so when we can take that step back and reflect, you know, why am I here right now? And how can I make the most of it with all that I am? then we are creating what we've talked about our self-fulfilling prophecies right yep then no matter what we are doing we are breathing that love we are aligning our souls with our goals we are bringing a hustle into whatever it is and and that could be life-changing for what we are doing that could be that could take a business that might be uh failing and turn it into something that is flourishing. It might take a business that is flourishing and make it even greater than it possibly could have been imagined. Or it might take something that you know financially is doing well and culturally not doing well and align so that everything is, is connected and, and have more oneness in it. And maybe that might be exactly what's needed. And so it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just this opportunity is to recognize, am I aligned or am I not? And to be strong enough when someone else is telling you that it should be this way, mm -hmm. to be aligned with your soul enough to say, this is who I am. This is the expression of that and hold to that expression. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to be completely transparent in this one. You know, like we get a lot of people telling us what we should and what we shouldn't do mm -hmm. with what we are doing here with our movement. And one of those things is we were told you have to find your thing, <laughs> right? What is your thing? And you and I sat with that for a while. Like, what do you mean our thing? Our thing is love. Mm -hmm. We are love, like a movement of love. Love. Love is our thing. Love. Love through connection. Love. Love is our thing. Mm -hmm. And though very kind and very desired to help us get to some next level, it's like, no, what is your thing? Like, do you hold interviews from beds? Do you, like, what is your thing? Mm -hmm. 
And we had to sit with ourselves. Like, that's the hustle. Mm -hmm. They want a hustle. Like, what is your shtick? Or gimmick. Or, what is your gimmick? Yeah. What is your catch people? Mm -hmm. And we sat with it and we're like, okay, do we, do we need a thing? Or do we need authentic? Mm -hmm. Do we need to talk with people and help people know that we see you? Mm -hmm. And as important as it is, like nothing against mm -hmm. having a thing, because having a thing is great. And that may be their authentic expression. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. A, a thing or a gimmick might be how they authentically express exactly. whatever fun. it is that they express. That great. could be fun. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, to be pressured into having a thing, mm -hmm. just it wasn't us. So we had to sit and we had to know, like our thing is authentic love, compassion, and care for humanity. And ne letting people know that life is hard. Mm. It's hard. And we want to be there with you through it. We want to see, hear, see you, we want to hear you, and we want to get you. And the more that we can all be seen, heard, and gotten, then honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know what we, how that can't be a better world. Right. And so the hustle in that is that we have to be available a lot mm -hmm. because it's a big world mm -hmm. and a lot of people are hurting. Mm -hmm. And so sure. the hustle isn't creating an image. It's being with mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. as humanity. And that's the spirituality in our hustle. Mm -hmm. And so I desired to put that out there because we're not going to have a thing. We're just going to be love. And we do love you. And we look forward to you tuning in to more because we got a lot more. We got a lot out here. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. If you haven't had a chance yet, wherever you are, take a moment and subscribe. We love to see the little subscribes and the likes. We'll see you in the next one.